everybody, Clint Seeley here. Today, I would like to bring you a fun and creative tutorial inspired by a post that Miss Nina put on the V7 Digitizing Software Facebook group. <clears throat> everybody seemed to love the design idea, and so I asked myself after looking at it, Clint, can you figure out how to do this as well? Now, Miss Nina posted a link, and let me show you that. Let me show you the, the design inspiration first. Miss Nina, down here, okay, she posted the link of this motif right here, kind of like a lace design made, made up of multiple circles, and then you can just kind of get crazy and creative with it by adding different stitch patterns. So everybody seemed to love it, and I, I followed the link to the blog post where the lady, um, that that shared this idea posted directions let's switch over to that for a second and I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna show you how to do this um, almost completely differently but let's go ahead and shift over to that blog post that created the inspiration and I believe this is on Bernina's um, German Germany site correct me if I'm wrong on that and so I translated all of the directions to English you know, when you land on the, the page here, everything will be in German, and then a little box pops up that asks you if you'd like to translate, and so that's what I did. So the original post was by, I hope I'm saying this correctly, a lady named Kasia Hanek, or Kasia Hanek. I don't really know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's the, uh, that's the credit right there for the inspiration. Now, as you land on the blog post and you scroll down, reading through the directions and following along, this is what Kasia is able to create. And let me just zoom in on that dude right there. It's beautiful, okay? But looking at the directions, you can follow along and certainly create it this way. But if y'all know me, I'm always one for up, up for a challenge to figure out or develop a technique that will make creating this design um, even more simple than it already is. And if, if you know me, you know I'm also going to want to use the art canvas in order to do it. So that's what I have done. If, you, if you, we scroll down here through the directions, you'll see what uh, Kasia has done to create this is just add a bunch of ellipse outlines or a bunch of circles and kind of layer them together one row at a time. So as you scroll down through, you can see the evolution of this design come together and then you have to um, put in uh, the coordinates exactly the way she does. And what you're doing in essence is recreating her exact work. I don't really like to do that myself because I'm here to educate you, not just so you can follow along and create exactly what I have created, but I want to I want to take my techniques and boil them down to such a simple form that you can remember them and it will inspire you to create your own wonderful version of a circle multiple circle embroidery design such as this. So that's what we're going to do. As you can see, scrolling down through this post it's just ring after ring and you can see here where she's then moving and joining layers together now what this creates is a lot of objects many many separate objects in the color film where you may have to um, for each one you may have to move resize change the entry and exit point of each one of those circles um, you also have to worry about thread trims and things like that, and, and you don't have complete control. And even though this is wonderful, and I'm not trying to uh, diminish the beauty of this work at all, I'm just looking at it as an educator, how I can teach you uh, very easily to create the same type of effect. Okay, so as we keep scrolling down, you can see she keeps adding layers, more layers, changing the, the patterns and whatnot, and then ultimately it becomes a beautiful design you can see here it's gorgeous okay and this is what miss Nina found and she posted this right here on the Facebook page 
and you know I take that as a challenge so I played around with it for a few hours trying to develop a technique that originates really from the art canvas and gives you a little bit more control and this is what I came up with and I asked right here this is what I came up with and I asked you all if you would like me to teach you how to do this so that's what I'm gonna do now the technique that I'm going to show you I can literally teach you this technique in about under five minutes and it's simple where it's where all of the time is going to be eaten up in the design process is just you going in and deciding what stitch pattern okay or what layer of black work you know what pattern and what look you want this desi design to have so you're going to spend the majority of your time being creative where you really only have to learn one tool i've simplified this down really to only one tool in the art canvas and then when we digitize it over to the embroidery canvas maybe combining that with another tool that you already know well which is just the outline design tool so it's two tools one that you already know if you all have my uh, mo my workbook if you have received the workbook in the mail this tool that I'm going to show you is introduced inside the v7 uh, workbook so you may already be familiar with it okay and maybe you brushed over this tool that I'm going to show you and you thought well that's neat but what can I really create with it well hold on to your horses because I'm getting ready to show you and we are going to be cooking with gas let me now switch on over to v7 and here you can see is what I've created let's look in the color film and you can see it's just a nice beautiful design let me go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can really get a good idea where you want to end up as far as the stitching goes now what's gonna be different with my technique as opposed to the other technique you can see here as we zoom in you see this section here let me zoom in just a little more this section from here to here you can see all of that pattern work right there that's not multiple layers that are smashed together that's one solid ring okay so it's one element it's not six separate outlines with the same pattern smashed together that you would have to then make sure the entry and exit points line up uh, jump stitches would be a of a concern so on and so on I'm gonna show you how to do that all right are you ready i can't hear you <laughs> I'm, see, I'm kidding that's something off of spongebob square pants my daughter has started to watch the spongebob with the square pants and they do that i can't hear you so anyway without further ado let me go ahead i'm going to go ahead and close this one out and i'm going to start from a blank canvas here we are blank canvas and of course we are going to head right on over to the uh, art canvas because that's where I love to create shapes so let's move on over to the art work canvas and that'll bring up the Corel draw or the artwork side of the program it may just take a, a minute to load and like I say I'm gonna teach you this technique in just a few minutes but this tutorial will go on hopefully we don't lock up here okay this tutorial will go on and the, the majority of the time that you watch is just me getting creative with um, patterns and whatnot. So without further ado, what we will do is we want to start everything right over here. You see here in our basic vector shapes. Let me click that and I'm going into basic vector shape mode. And when you engage that tool, you'll notice your options right here on the toolbar have now changed one of them being okay selecting a shape that you want to uh, use to create your artwork and right here you see this drop down list that little drop down list is our some of our perfect shaping tools and one of those right here this one right between the do not enter and the smiley face let's click that one and that's kind of a ring or a donut shape okay as we hover over the artwork canvas we'll click once and that'll turn us in you see how my cursor has now changed and I am ready to draw now I want to make sure that I make a perfect circle so before I start drawing I'm gonna hold the control key on the keyboard down while I draw and if you hit the control key and hold it down and then start drawing your circle will become will be 
a perfectly scaled circle. So you'll notice that when I'm done drawing right here, you can see in the dimensions, it's exactly the same width as it is the same height. Now I can center this circle on the page, boom, just like that, hitting the P. Okay, the letter P on the keyboard will center everything. Now what we're looking at here is just a ring. Now you'll notice or you'll remember from the workbook what's so cool about perfect shapes is you see that little red node right there. Let me zoom in on this guy. That little red node right here, okay, is where all the magic happens. This is what gives you complete control over this tool as well circle. So if I hover over that node, the cursor will change when it's ready to be edited. See there? See that change? So when you hover over that red node, you can then grab that node and start scaling in. Look at here. Start scaling in. And see how I've changed that circle? Just, oop, let me hit undo. I got a little carried away. Okay, let me grab that guy again, and I'll start, I'll come in. And see how I'm making that donut hole smart, smaller, but I've made the rest of the circle beefier. I just want you to change that to something that you're comfortable with or something that you like. I'm going to, and, and just play around with this, maybe resize the shape a little bit, whatever floats your boat. I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to, oop. Sometimes you get carried away and you have to hit undo. Play around with this. When you're zoomed way in, okay, which is the way that I usually work with it like this. You don't have that problem okay so this is looking pretty good i'm going to make this inside circle just a little bit smaller okay something like that right there i'm then going to hit p on the keyboard and that's going to center it so here's my first ring so instead of creating a bunch of outlines and smashing them together with the same pattern i'm going to create a ring that i can then digitize you see so let me fill this guy with color I'm gonna go over here, maybe I slap a pink on it, and I'm gonna get rid of the outline. So now what I'm looking at is just kind of a donut shape here, yeah? So from there, we're just gonna convert this to embroidery. And that's really all there, all that there is to it. But I'm gonna show you the second, I'm gonna show you the entire design process. But this, what you've just done right here is really, it's as hard as it gets. It's really the only new thing that you have to learn if you've been going through all of my tutorials up to this point. So let's convert this guy to embroidery. Let's hit convert, and we're going to be left with, hey, just a basic, plain, old uh, embroidery. Nothing special here, nothing to see here. But what we can do now is we're going to change this from a boring fill stitch to something of a pattern, kind of a, we'll start giving it a lacy effect. Yes. So what I'm going to do here is I can go down to some of these quick change buttons right here. You see, I could change this to a black work fill. I could change this to candle wicking. I could change this to uh, uh, lace work. Okay, we could do a stipple stitch, stipple stitch, whatever um, that you want to do. Or you can get into the patterns. I like to get into the patterns. Now, one thing that I like to do right off of the bat is change this to a color that's going to pop off the screen. This does not mean this is the thread color you're going to end up embroidering on the fabric of the finished product. But I want something that's going to pop off of the screen. I'm going to change this to blue so you can really see the stitches. Okay, So let's, let's zoom in just a little bit. And you do not have to follow along uh, exactly from this point. I'm going to go select a different pattern. But you go select whatever pattern you like the best okay so i'll right click on this guy i'm going to move this over just a little bit here this object properties and i'm going to select a different pattern okay so i'm going to go select i'm going to put this in true stitch mode and let's look for something else that might look really cool in here i mean right now i'm in the heirlooms folder i'm going to switch let me go up here to the, st the start. Monogram ornaments, usually these are satin stitches and would not look good for that particular use. But now we're starting to get into some patterns that might look pretty nice. Let me try this guy right here and see what happens. Okay, and hit apply. Now that looks pretty cool, don't you think? Doesn't, doesn't that look nice? Yeah, and you can, of course, change the size of the pattern, the spacing. You have complete control over all that. 
But for now, I'm satisfied with what I'm looking at at this point, and I'm going to hit OK. So now, <clears throat> there are different ways to add our next ring. What I what I want to do first is I don't want to I don't want consecutive thick rings in a row. So this is kind of a thick donut style ring. I'm going to slap an outline on this dude as kind of a highlight or an accent, and then I'll go I'll add another ring that's maybe a, a, is bigger but maybe a little thinner or thicker, whatever floats whatever ends up floating my boat. Yeah. So what I want to do now is I will just select this guy and I'm going to add a simple outline to it. All right. So we'll go over here to edit and you see here outline design. I'm going to hit outline design. And since I have an outline here and also one in the middle, I could outline holes if I wanted to. It's whatever you want to do, but do it, make it a different color. In the at the end when everything's over, the entire project may be one continuous color say of blue white whatever but for design purposes as we are designing and we are building this design each layer needs to be a different color and then we will make it all monochromatic at the end but for now think like a designer think like a digitizer okay so white i don't want to do white because i'll be switching back and forth to the art canvas and the art canvas background is white. So I want something that's going to not be blue, but is going to contrast a little bit. Let's select the purple. I'm going to do a purple outline. I am not going to do an offset of 0 0.30, maybe something more like uh, 0.3, not, or wait, 0 0.03. All right. I'm going to do a single stitch and I'm going to outline holes. If you do this and you don't like the way that it looks, you just hit undo and do it again. That undo button is a powerful tool. So what do I got here? Now what has been added is an outline. You see this outline? Now that's boring. You're saying to me, Clint, that, that yeah, that's great, but that's just kind of boring there, Clint. Well, what I'm going to do, let me show you. I'm going to spice it. I'm going to kick things up a notch. I can take this outline, select it, boom. And then go right here and change it maybe to a candle wick. Look at here. Change it to a candle wicking. Look at that. Let me come back out. Maybe that's not what you like. Maybe those candle wicks are spaced too far apart. Because remember, you're going to have jump stitches right here. Maybe they're spaced too far apart. Maybe they're too big. No problem. I'll right click to bring up the properties. And I'm just going to change to maybe a half knot. Boom. Half knot candle wick. Maybe that's looking a little bit better maybe i change that to a yellow all right and i know that's clashing but don't worry about it that's not the point um this is not going to end up being yellow at the very end all right and we can always come back and change this later you're not completely married to this candle wicking stitch because you're keeping it you'll see over here in the color film i can't stress this enough you're keeping all of these elements kind of separate you see there that's the way you want to be. So what are we going to do with this inside outline? Maybe I do the same thing and I can come back and revisit this later, but I am going to just for now, for the purposes of moving on, I will turn that guy pink. And now we're starting to cook with some gas. You can see where I'm going now. Now let me show you a trick you probably didn't know about in the design process. I'm, I, I'm going to create another one of these donut pieces by going back and creating it in the art canvas. When I go back to the art canvas, do not use the undo button. Just hit the art canvas tab and you'll go back and it'll bring uh, an example of the embroidery scaled correctly with you. Let me show you. So now I'm going to go back to the art canvas. And I'm going to draw another circle and put it exact another donut and shape it and size it exactly to where I want it to be based on what I'm looking at here. Now you can see why I didn't turn any of the embroidery white because it would blend in with the background here, yes. But what we're going to do is go right back to our perfect shaping tools. Looky here, drop down list, and I'm going to select that donut again. <clears throat> now remember, after you click on the background once, that'll switch Boom, now I'm, now I'm in drawing mode, but you want to hold the control key on the keyboard down while you draw, so it draws it out to scale. All right, holding the control key, 
I'm going to now draw, and I'm going to make something a little bit bigger, and we can change the size. Now, if I hit P on the keyboard, there we go, looky there. <clears throat> but now I can't see where the lines are. So, of course, I'm going to get rid of the fill and, and just slap an outline on it. So I'll left-click the X here and maybe right-click the black, okay? Or maybe I right-click red so things contrast. And you can see here, as we zoom in, things overlap, okay? This is not lining up. But that this is where things get complete control is absolutely necessary because if you remember, even though things are overlapping, we have full total control via this little red node. You see that little red node there? So as I hover over that red node, let me zoom in so you can see a little better. I hover over the red node. I can now grab, drag this up. Oop, where'd it go? Let me hit undo. Sometimes this happens. Okay. I'm going to drag. I'm going to grab and drag. There we go. You see how that's changing that point? Look at there. See how that's changing? I'll bring it right down till it snaps right on the edge of where the the outline is for the candle wicks. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And now you've created your next layer. Now let's turn this a color that we have not used already. Maybe um, a dark purple. Get rid of that outline. And we're going to now convert this guy to embroidery. Watch here. Boom. Convert to embroidery. And there. We are now building a design, ladies and gentlemen. We are now building the design. So now, what I want to do, because just by default, it converts it over to a nice boring fill stitch, and we are not boring people, okay? We are very fun, crazy, and creative people, so we do not need no stinking fill stitch. I'm going to turn that fill stitch, start going through, maybe black work. Maybe candle wicking, nope, that's too much, that's too dense. Lace work, nah, not fun enough. Let's get to another pattern. That's just, that's what I say. That, you know, call me crazy, that's just what I say. Okay, so now we have an opportunity to add another pattern. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Right click on this new layer, and I'm going to select even yet another pattern. And we'll just start going through here and finding things that we like. Let me let me try this one here under the heirloom. And like I say, you add whatever pattern makes you happy. That's what you go with. This is nice, but it's too small. It's too dense for what I'm looking for. So we just go right back and find something else until we fall in love. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's go to home decor. Let's see. Let's scroll down. No, home decor is not right. But here, you see this pattern? I, I got an idea for that one later as an outline pattern. Okay, so we'll be coming back to that one. Miscellaneous. Yeah, these are nice, but sometimes, now I'll tell you, sometimes something looks boring on screen, but you never know how it's going to translate out as a pattern. So sometimes give some of these boring looking things a chance. I tell you, it only takes a second to give them a chance. For crying out loud, give give them a chance. This one's named Feather. Let me just try that. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Ah, that's neat, but that's not what I'm looking for. I bet you didn't think that's what was getting ready to happen, though. Okay? So just by clicking and giving things a chance, you never know. Let me try this one. And I'm just going to go through. I'm going to give things a chance. That's not too bad. That's not what I was expecting either. And remember, you can change. You have complete control. If they're size drawn, you can change the size, the spacing, the offset right there. So let me go in. Let's give something else a chance. I know I don't want stars. Okay, that's just a little too much. Ooh, this, we got some nice looking stuff here. Look at this guy right here. Right there. That might look nice. Let's see. It just depends on the size. That's a little bigger than I was expecting. Nice looking, just not what I'm looking for. And we'll just keep moving on with our lives. And we just, so you can really get caught in just creating. Okay. This, this is more of an accent. Like um, you would use this pattern as an outline. That's what I'm thinking. You just never know. That's, that's beautiful. It's a little too much. It's a little too po overpowering for me. All right. We'll just keep looking through these. How about this one here? Nope. Not what I'm looking for. Let's just keep moving on. Let's go to, how about nature? What do we got for nature? No, I don't want none of that. 
quilting. Let's see. Here's some quilting patterns. All right, this is like a chain stitch right here. That looks really good in some designs, just not what I'm doing. What about this one here? And I know you're thinking, come on, Clint, get get to the point. Use this time. You should be going through this as, as well. You should be clicking along with your mouse as we speak. I t and I told you this was going to take some time. Um, just finding something, just dedicate yourself to going through this and finding something you fall in love with. Now, I had before I had found something that I really liked and let's see cross what about this one here I think maybe that is the guy earlier that I really liked I, I kind of like that all right now this may look a little overpowering right now we can change the size and when everything is in a monochromatic effect like if I change this to a white it's not so overpowering okay if it's a complementary color and not so um, in your face contrast it can look really nice and you could be like that looks really nice Clint but maybe the size is a little too uh, is a little is off a little so I could make the size let's see up one here up one here up one here up one here and apply let's see what happens okay that's changing things let's make the size a little bit bigger and you've got a preview right there let's hit apply you see how dramatically this has changed now that I'm changing the sizing and the spacing? That doesn't look anything like what I started with just a minute ago. But I'm going to go with it, okay? I'm not going to hold up this whole operation just because I'm, you know, I'm teaching the tool, all right? I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. So let's go through this cycle one more time, all right? Just one more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another outline here. And then another donut and I'm gonna finish off the entire design with one final outline so what I want to do let's add the outline first uh, let me select this this blue element we just created go to the edit toolbox outline design and let's find a completely different color maybe a green and I'm not I am not gonna outline holes this time and I'm going to do the offset just a little more, maybe a 0.05 on the offset. Let's see if that's what I want. Now, I want the offset to be just a little more, so I'm going to undo. And it goes away, and I'm going to reapply that tool. And I'm showing you this. I know exactly what I, what I want, but I'm showing you what's realistic, risk, realistically what you might run into you're going to have a little bit of trial and error. So maybe this time we go up to point 1. Okay. And there's more this is more of the offset that I was looking for because I'm going to use I'm going to do a pattern here and I need a little bit of an offset because there's size to the pattern. So now I'm going to select this new okay outline I just added and let's change this to maybe a pattern. Something like that right there. Boom! Now we're starting to cook with some gas, folks. I'm telling you, we're starting to get there. But I don't. maybe I don't want this one. Let's look at something else. Let's look at we're black work. So let's let, select a different black work. We started off with this one. Maybe we try the second one. Hit apply. That's That looks kind of cool, don't you think? I'm going to stick with that one. Is that Now, is that not a cool effect right there? right there that's a cool effect and i can tell you right now you're looking at this going that's really not all that pretty that's because the colors are completely clashing all right let me show you let me hit select all and i'll turn everything one color and you can see how everything starts working together all right but i, I that's not where i want to be right now so i'm going to hit undo and we'll go right that undo button i'm telling you folks ladies that's the best button in the program could you imagine how frustrating the entire program would be without the undo button? I'm telling you. So, okay, I'm almost done. I need to wrap this up for you because I know you're probably sitting there going, come on, Clint, wrap this thing up. Let's go back and create one more just to kind of reinforce the lesson. Let's create one more element and then finalize that dude with an outline. So I'll go right back to the art canvas. And notice the preview there looking good go back to that perfect shaping tool that's the donut tool right there activate it hold the control key down on the computer and draw one more shape I'm going to center it 
get rid of this fill and slap an outline on it that con contrasts so you can see it. All right. I'll make this just a little bit bigger. Recenter it. Okay. I'm happy with the way that that looks, but you can see this outline here is overlapping. So I just need to grab that red node and draw this up right, right to where it's right on the edge of that green. You see there? See how it's snapped into place right on the edge of that green element? This looks good and I'm happy. So I'm going to fill this with, let's see, a different color. Take the outline off and let's convert it to embroidery. Convert to embroidery and there we go. A nice boring fill stitch, but I am going to quickly change that to black work, a pattern, whatever you want to do. All right, so let's go with a pattern. And I'm going to quickly find another pattern that I like. And you can reuse some of these other patterns if you want. If that's just, if that's what floats your boat, if that's what you're happy with, that's what I'm telling you, that's what you need to do. Whatever makes you happy and puts a smile on your own face. Let's go look at the cross patterns again. I kind of like some of those. And let's see, nah, maybe not embellishment all right here's a good one that's neat looking let's see what that guy looks like apply all right that's that's cool but there's a look i don't like i don't like these big open spaces right there so maybe not what about this guy okay and i'm just going to move through this and narrate kind of quickly okay i'm going to live with that right there that might not be your choice, but you get the idea. You can see what we're building, what we're making happen. Now, I believe this is important. At this point, when you're to the point where you're like, okay, I'm really happy with the size and the way that this is looking, you need to finish off. You need to finish. You don't want a perfectly round edge. You need to finish off. Your final edge needs to be finished off with a, a circular pattern that really has some character to it. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll select that final layer, go to Edit, Outline Design, and I'm going to slap a new color on this, um, maybe a, a black or a gray, maybe an offset of 0.05, because I want this one to be close, okay, a little bit closer, yeah. And I'm going to select this guy, and for bring up the properties for that outline, and for that outline, we're going to do a pattern. So where's the pattern? Da -da -da -da. Pattern run. And let's find, remember that one I was talking about, this one right here? There's another one just like it. But let's go to this under the heirloom. You see this A701. Let's find that guy and apply. And see what I'm talking about? Boom! Now it's all starting to come together. Now this, I mean, when you set it off with a really nice outline, it really makes things pop. I mean, you're really cooking with gas. So I really like the way that looks. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to zoom in and make sure the registration on this is correct. See how you got some overlap right here? Maybe you don't want that overlap. So what you can do is you can select that last layer where there's some overlap, select it, and you can change how big it is to scale um, right here. Instead of 100%, let me go 101 hit enter and watch watch how it changes see how it moved and so you're now you're you're not overlapping quite so much and let's see if we're still happy with the way that that looks and you don't have to do that that's just if you don't want overlap okay I'm really liking the way that that looks now let's make this thing look the way that we want it you of course would have you at this point you have you have to tidy things up in the color film you'll need to bring up the color film and just make sure that your elements are embroidering out in the order that you want them to embroider out you might want it to start from the center and go all the way out but this candle wicking right here that's in the very center you might that want that to be laid down very last if that's the case you would select in the candle in the color film that candle wicking element and move that all the way to the end and you could see now it would be the last thing that would go and it may be the sec same thing for uh, the second candle wick you would want those two things those two elements at the very end on top okay 
So there, everything's looking good. Now I want you to change the color of the background. The background needs to look like the color of the fabric you're thinking of embroidering this design on. So let's go to design, background. And I want the background color to maybe be, uh, you know, a blue like so. All right. And now you can see things don't, things don't look that great. Control A will select all, and this is what I'm going to do. You don't have to, but I'm going to hit Control A and maybe do like a white color. And we could see what white would look like on top of this fabric. I'm going to get rid of the hoop view because I want to truly look at this as though it is embroidered out. And this, this is looking, in my opinion, this looks beautiful. Everything seems to be lining up correctly i mean the way things line up since this this isn't a thick stitch you don't have to worry about overlap so much you don't want big gaps but a little bit of overlap never hurt nobody and this looks great don't you think this looks great and really i've only i've created this entire thing using only two tools the one tool that perfect shape tool in the art canvas and then the outline design tool the rest of it is just clicking around and selecting what patterns and effects you want to slap on those uh, shapes. Don't you think this is great? I mean, stuff like this is beautiful. And you look at it, you know, you download it from the internet and buy it. When you see it, you think it looks great. And you look at it and you think, my goodness, how did these people even make this? Well, here it is. That's If you have the right tools and somebody just points you in the right direction you see I don't want you to create exactly what I created um, these things can be easy especially if you do them a few times you know go through it a few times so here's my challenge if you've stuck with me this far I know I've talked on and on and you're probably pulling your hair out going Clint will you shut your mouth I know my wife tells me that all the time so I'm no stranger to that <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. She does not tell me that. But here's my challenge. Do this. Create something awesome or something you think that's awesome. Your first design, the first time you do this, it's going to look great. And then each consecutive one that you make is going to look better and better. Other ladies are going to post these designs on the V7 group and you'll get inspiration from their designs and you'll come back, you'll race back to your computer, whip something new out, be even prouder of it. All I ask is please share. There are people that don't participate in the forum on the group on Facebook, but they watch what everybody else makes and it might help inspire them to create even better things at home. Okay? So please, I ask you, go through this, make something that you're proud of, post it on the V7 group. And I'll remind you, if you get to this point and you forgot how to take a picture that you can share on the V7 group, here, let me show you. You just go to File, and then Save Design as Bitmap right here. And that'll, that'll save the design, and make sure when you do, let me show you, let me go a step further. When you hit Save Design as Bitmap, Right here where it says make background transparent, don't do that. Unclick that because we want the background to show up as well so it'll really pop off of the screen. You, it saves it as a PNG file. You can then just post that just like it's a picture on the V7 group and it'll be there. Okay? So, that's all the talking I'm going to do it do towards you today. It is now time to go make something awesome. This is Clint Seeley. Thank you for watching.